In this lesson, we're going to talk about rotations in the coordinate plane around a point other than the origin. So this means that our center of rotation can be any single point on the graph um, other than the point 0, 0. So the previous lesson, we looked at how to do this graphically using the origin. So it's going to be pretty much the same process. It's just we're not going to have our center at the origin. It's going to be some other point that will be specified. One thing to keep in mind, though, is that you can't use any of the rules. So you can't use like a rotation of 180, you can't use a rule that you just negate the x and y values. Um, or you can't use the rules for 270 or 90. You're going to have to do everything graphically since the center of rotation will not be the origin. So the process for doing this graphically is the first step you're going to draw new axes. So I'm going to just put them in quotes here because it's not, they're kind of like imaginary axes. It's not really part of the graph. So you're going to draw new axes on the center that they give you. So you're almost going to force that center that they give you, the center of rotation, you're almost going to force it to be the origin. And then from there, once you draw those new axes, the process becomes the same as rotations around the origin. So you're going to have to decide how many quadrants to move. So decide how many quadrants move and remember for this we have if it's 90 degrees that means you're going to be moving one quadrant if it's 180 degrees the rotation that means you're going to move two quadrants and if it's 270 that means you're going to move three quadrants And this is all counterclockwise movement. So I'm going to just make a note over here. Whenever we say 90, 180, 270, we're talking about positive. We're talking about moving counterclockwise. The only time that you're going to move clockwise is if they give you a neg negative angle or if it specifies to move counterclockwise or to move clockwise. Otherwise, if it doesn't specify, then you assume counterclockwise. Um, but typically, it's going to tell you to move counterclockwise. So the third thing that you always have to decide, so once you figure out how many quadrants to move, you have to decide on the horizontal and vertical movement from the center. So decide horizontal, remember, so horizontal is right, left, vertical is up, down. So you're going to decide the horizontal and vertical movement from the center. So that's going to be how you're going to move from the center. So that means if it's 90 or 270 degree rotation, you're going to flip the order of the horizontal and vertical movement. If it's 180, you're going to keep the horizontal and vertical movement the same. So same order. So let's actually try an example. So the first thing here, it says we have triangle ABC. Find the coordinates of triangle A prime, B prime, C prime, the image of triangle ABC after a rotation of 90 degrees counterclockwise centered at the origin. So there's three things you need to know from there. The angle, the direction, and the center. So the angle is 90 degrees, so that's going to tell me I'm going to have to move one quadrant. Counterclockwise tells me that I'm going to be moving this direction here, so to the left. And centered at the origin, or centered at 2 comma negative 2 means that's where I'm going to start. And I'm going to have to um, count everything from there. Because it's 90 degrees, I'm moving one quadrant. But remember, it means one quadrant, and it means that you're going to flip the order of your horizontal and vertical movement. So let's go ahead and start this out. So graph your triangle. So A is going to be 2, 0. Make sure you're labeling your coordinates. 2 comma 3 for B and C is 4 0 and then the center is at 2 negative 2 so 2 negative 2 I'm just going to write center by that so that you know that that's the center of rotation so that means everything is going to get measured from the center and that's going to be the vertex of the angle of rotation so here's the part um, where now you want to draw, so step one is take your center and 
draw on your new axes. So I'm going to draw them dotted. I would imagine, I would say do the same thing. Kind of just lightly draw in your axes. You can use another color if you want so it stands out. Um, but as long as you can see them, that's all that you really need. So I'm just going to adjust this a little bit. So now my quadrants are going to be quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, and quadrant 4. So remember, you label them in a C format. So that means if I'm going 90 degrees counterclockwise, I have to figure out, well, where are these going to move? Where are all the points going to move? So the points are all right here in the first quadrant. So they're all going to move into the second quadrant. So they're going to move one quadrant. We know it's going counterclockwise, so that's why they're going to move to quadrant 2. We have to flip the order. So we start at the center, and we count, and we're going to switch the order of the horizontal and vertical movement. So horizontal 0 up 2 means instead of, so switch it. So up, so horizontal 0, vertical is 2, so it's going to be horizontal 2, vertical 0. And that means it's going to move right here because I need to move into the second quadrant. So it's going to be A prime. Then I go back to the center and count to B. So B is going to be one, horizontal 0, vertical 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's going to be horizontal 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then it's vertical 0. Then count to C. So it's going to be over 2, up 2. So that means I'm going to go switch them, which will be the same thing. So over two, up two. So there's C prime. So here's your triangle. Now remember, it should look as if from the center, I went the same distance, but also I should see a right angle. So see how you have a right angle from A to A prime? From C to C prime, you see a right angle. And then from B to B prime, I see a right angle. So that's how I know I've done this correctly. So now all I have to do is state my coordinates. So A prime, B prime, C prime. So A prime is 0, negative 2. B prime is negative 3, negative 2. And C prime is going to be 0, comma, 0. So that's it. That's the answer. So let's try a few more. So the next one here, start with your triangle. So we have negative 6, comma, 2 negative 3 comma 1 negative 1 comma 3 and again make sure you're labeling your coordinates so then it says find the coordinates of triangle ABC the image of triangle ABC after a rotation of 90 degrees clockwise so clockwise tells me I'm moving to the right one quadrant since it's 90 that tells me it's going to be one quadrant and we're going to flip the order of the horizontal and vertical movement. And we have our center. Center is at 0, negative 1. So I'm going to go ahead and graph that. I'm going to label it center. And then I'm going to draw my axes. So my first step, once we have everything graphed, draw your axes through the center. And again, just do these really lightly or use like a color if you want. Um, and then when you see your axes, think about your quadrants. I have quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, and quadrant 4. So if my triangle has to move 90 degrees clockwise, it means it's going to end up in this quadrant here. So each point right now is in the second quadrant, so they're all going to move to the first quadrant. And we're going to flip the order. So start at the center, and you had to go, so I'm going to do B first. So I had to go 1, 2, 3 horizontally, vertically 2. So I'm going to go horizontal 2, vertical is going to be 3. So I'm just switching the order of the horizontal and vertical movements. To get to C, I had to go left 1, so horizontal 1, vertical 1, 2, 3, 4. So now it's going to be horizontal 4, and then vertical is going to be 1. So that's going to be C prime. And then to get to A from the center was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3. So switch it. So 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. If you need to write these down like as you're counting and then just know to switch them, that's fine. You can do that. But remember, if you're not sure if you've rotated this to the correct spot, we'll compare the angles here. So we should see a 90-degree angle 
and the triangle was supposed to go clockwise. So if you were to connect A to A prime, see how you have a right angle? If I were to connect um, C to the center to C prime, again, you have a right angle. Same thing with B to B prime. So that's how I know I'm doing these correctly because I'm seeing that angle of rotation is 90 degrees. So last thing I have to do then is just state my coordinates. So A prime, B prime, C prime. A prime is going to be 3 comma 5. B prime is going to be 2 comma 2. And C prime is going to be 4 comma 0. And that's it. So then the last one I want to look at is a rotation of 180. So you can see how that one looks. So start off with graphing your triangle. So negative 2, 7. Negative 3, 3, 1, 2, 3. And 2, 3. So this one, your triangle is split between um, the axes here. So let's look at the rest of this here. So the rotation is 180 degrees counterclockwise. So it's going to be going to the left, centered at this point, negative 3, negative 2. So negative 3, negative 2. And I have to see if this is, if the triangle is split between my axes. If your triangle is split between your axes, that just means that some points will move to a different quadrant than the other points. In this case, I have just one point, since my center is shifted, I have one point on the axis. That just means it's going to stay on the axis when you rotate it 180 degrees. Um, but, for example, if I had, let's say, point A was over on this side, that would mean that point A is going to move two quadrants, so it would end up here, and point C is going to move two quadrants, which is going to end up here. So if they start in different quadrants, they'll end in different quadrants, depending on your center. So in this case, I have my center here. I'm rotating 180 degrees. So 180 degrees means two quadrants, and it means that you're going to do the same order for your horizontal and vertical movement. So you count, so let's count from the center to B. So horizontal zero, vertical is one, two, three, four, five. So horizontal zero, vertical one, two, three, four, five. And I know that it had to move two quadrants, so it went from here to here. So this is B prime. A is also going to end up down here, two quadrants, so I had to go horizontal one, vertical one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So my horizontal is going to be one, my vertical is going to be nine, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, so it goes off, so just add a little slash down there. And then for C, I had to go right 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so keep it the same, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And remember, I knew that they all had to end up in quadrant 2 because I had to move, or um, quadrant 3, really, because I had to move two quadrants. So this is going to be C prime. Go ahead and connect. And again, if you're not sure, look at your angle. So from um, the center to B and then to B prime, you have a straight line, 180 degree angle. From the center to A, to A prime, you have a straight line. The center with C and C prime, you have a straight line. So that's how you know that these are done correctly because the angle of rotation matches what it should match, which is 180 degrees. So now I just have to state my coordinates, and then I'm done. So I have A prime, B prime, C prime. So A prime is going to be negative 4, negative 11. B prime is going to be negative 3, negative 7. And then negative 8, negative 7 for C prime. And that's it. So remember, there's no rules, there's no pattern between the coordinates here because the center was shifted. So that's why you're just going to have to do these graphically um, with your new set of axes.